normal stresses, shear stresses. And coming back to the concept of eigenvalues, we're going to see that even if we have a tensor in which all the elements are different than zero, we're going to always find an orientation at which we can write the same state of stress, but with a different coordinate system so that it simplifies only to normal stresses and no shear stresses. Uh, in addition to that, of getting eigenvalues, you also get what are called eigenvectors. And the eigenvectors will tell you what is that particular orientation. Let's call it star one, two, three. That particular orientation at which this thing happens. So I brought here a toy to, to help uh, visualize what's going on. Uh, it's like this cube. Can you tell me what's the color of this cube? Let me zoom up. Multicolor. Multicolor. How many colors you see there? Six. Six. Nine. Any any other? Uh, let's say you know uh, here. Already you have three, right? And then there's four, five, six, um, I don't know, maybe seven, eight, something like that, right? All right. You see many colors because you're looking at an orientation which is uh, not the easiest orientation to look at. Uh, and it's the same thing with the stress tensor. In an arbitrary coordinate system, probably you're going to see all these terms different than zero. But there's going to be always some particular orientation at which this stress simplifies a lot. And at that particular orientation, you will see that there is just one color here, for example, pink, yellow, and blue. That's it, three colors. But when you know when you look at it at some other orientation, it looks like you have more than that. But it's just the orientation in which you look at. If you look at the right orientation, you will recover uh, just in this case three values. Okay. Um, any questions? Any comment? Just, just curious that yeah. compression positive is like a kind of default or tension positive is sometimes you use is okay and or in geomechanics usually we use compression as positive because most of the rocks are compressed uh, in most places. And in some places you may have tension and that is going to appear as negative. But there are some other fields where compression and tension, they are, uh, appear you know, as often, the, the two of them. Uh, so it doesn't make any, any difference to make it com negative or positive. But in geomechanics, in order, in order to uh, avoid using so many negative signs, we change that to positive, so we don't use the, the negative sign. But for example, people, in the mechanical engineering, they will use compression negative and tension positive. We'll see later on when we talk about pore elasticity, uh, we'll have to switch a little bit to the convention of compression negative and uh, tension positive to be in agreement with the reference that we're going to, to see. But it's, it's the same, at the end it's the same. All right. So any, any other question? We're going to get into some heavy math right now. But not heavy math, but a little bit.
So, when you're ready, we'll, we'll start. Our objective now is to develop some equations that help us understand when this is moving and when it's not moving. Uh, for example, uh, uh, those of you that took a, a statics class, what was the first thing that you would do in order to see if an object is moving or not? You will do summation of, Force. of forces equal to zero, right? And that's what we're going to do, but now with stresses and in three dimensions. Okay. So let's start. I'm going to draw the same cube that we had before. Uh, now we have to make uh, the cube transparent. So I'm going to leave it like this. And in this cube, uh, it's actually meant to be a cube. Let me work on it. Okay, in this cube, we're going to be particularly interested in the forces, equilibrium of forces in direction number three. And we're going to see that the same applies to the rest of the cube, uh, cube uh, later on. Okay, uh, so if the summation of forces is equal to zero, uh, that means that the object is not accelerating. Right, so it's not moving. Uh, so in this case, the acceleration is going to be equal to zero. All right, so let's see what are the forces acting on this cube. So we say we had what, what type of stress is in the cube? Let's start for the e e easiest one. Normal stress. Normal stress. So here on the side of the origin of the coordinate system, I'm going to put sigma 3, 3. And on the other side, I'm going to put, now I'm, I'm drawing the two of them, OK? The first one, and on the top, I'm going to have that one plus a tiny amount due to the variation of that stress in direction 3. So this sign. It's like a curve D, and it's a partial derivative. But it means the variation of this in that direction. And when you multiply that times that distance, which in this case is dx3, it gives you the absolute value of that variation. So here we have a value. And on the other side, we have that value plus some tiny variation. All right. So, so yes. Uh, I think that the autofocus is turning again. Can you switch it off? Uh, the what? Autofocus. Uh, the autofocus? Uh, yes, yes. Let me zoom out a little bit more. And then uh, just let me know, guys, if it's some point, you know, you cannot see very well because I'm most of the time I'm looking just at my notes. And I'm not looking at the screen or over there. Uh, so I, I don't know what's going on over here. But just let me know, OK? All right. So if the summation of forces uh, in this direction is equal to 0, uh, then uh, we have we said this stress. And now this is a stress. It's not a force, right? So if I want a force, what do I have to do? To multiply it by? By the area, right? And let's look at the area, for example. This area is dx1 times dx2. So here we have dx1, dx2, and now we have a force. Stress, force divided by area, force, stress times area. This is going to the direction of the axis, so it's positive. And on the other side, I have the same 
plus the tiny variation in direction 3 and all of that times dx1 times dx2 okay is that the only force that I'm going to have in direction number 3 what other forces do I have we have the shear right and the shear uh, we made it with orange we're going to have for example sigma 2 3 which in in this phase uh, it should go like this and in this other phase it should go like that so this is sigma 2 3 and this is going to be also sigma 2 3 plus a tiny variation in direction 3 due to a change in direction 2 and also I'm going to have the other one which is going to be sigma 1 3 right so sigma 1 3 should be it's in on the back face and here is going to be sigma 1 3 and this one over here is sigma 1 3 plus a tiny variation on direction 1 so all of those are acting in direction number 3 normal and shear and I need to put all of them together uh, to get the equation I want so uh, let's do that uh, I'm going to have then sigma 2 3 times which area now dx 1 dx 3 right and and the, I have on the other side uh, that stress and here uh, we said dx1 dx3 and the other one is 1 3 dx1 dx3 no so 2 3 is dx uh, dx2 yeah uh, no no the problem is that I, I messed up with the dx in here can you see those are wrong oh, oh, yeah. yeah so oh, opposite. yeah so yeah I was seeing something weird there so this is dx1 and this is dx2 so so this this is okay dx1 dx3 dx1 dx3 and now this one is dx2 dx3 minus the other one dx1 dx2 